Okay. Hey, everyone. I look all disheveled. Um, hey, <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome to Mission Impact Series with Tracy and Ty. Today, we're going to be talking in this series, which, you know, all our series are four-part series, is we break it down for you. Um, how do trends affect social impact businesses? So there are a lot of things happening in our world today. And those things have a direct effect on how social impact businesses perform, how they are able to generate revenue, grow and impact their community. So we're going to talk about a few of those things and the roles that a lot of people um, within the infrastructure have to play with how this happens. So the first one we're going to tackle is the board, right? We're going to talk about board members and how trends affect how board members work and all of that stuff. We'll talk about it. Then the next one we're going to talk about is donors and countries contributors, because in nonprofits, you donate. In social enterprise, you contribute. And then we're going to talk about volunteers. <laughs> that's going to be interesting because that, that's a big thing. And then the last thing we're going to talk about, which is what everybody always wants to know about, grant makers. So how grant makers are making the decisions as to who they're going to give monies to, how much, so on and so forth. All right. So if this is your first time, um, catching us. My name is Tracy B. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where I help change agents to design, build, and fund their social um, their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles they desire while impacting their communities. All right. My name is Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to get from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. I like that we're talking about board today <laughs> and trends. Mm -hmm. And trends and board, uh, a couple of you know, sessions ago, we talked about the fact that if you're a nonprofit organization and you don't have a board, then you don't have a nonprofit organization because nonprofit organizations have to have boards, right? Right. Um, in today's you know social climate and in everything else that's going on in the in the society, I think that you know board engagement for some has fallen off. Um, tremendously, just because yes. people have problems, you know, people exactly, got, people exactly. Have, have their own things that they have to do. Not that people haven't always had their own things. It's just that because the you know society as a whole, some of the things that we're experiencing now is weighing down on more people. Mm -hmm. It's affecting more people. Um, what I've seen a lot of lately is that people are more in tune with things like social justice and you know those kind of things. And when your organization really represents a cause that they're connected to from the heart, they're more likely to, to, to stay engaged a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But even then, it, you, you have to be, you have to think about the fact that people have their, their issues right now. You got COVID, you got, you got all kinds of stuff that's happening that could mean that somebody who was once engaged, you know, they, they lost they their, you know, they had to do something else. So they started their own business, right? Mm -hmm. a, a lot of, a lot um, of people have started their own businesses. Their own business, and now yeah. they don't have that kind of time mm -hmm. that they once had to just be on your board and do whatever you want them to do because they're trying mm -hmm. to grow their own thing. Right. Um, a, a lot of them will have ulterior motives, you know. Oh, yes. um, I'm get on your board so I can level up for my own business that I just mm -hmm. started. So you have to, you know, not all bad things are happening, but there mm -hmm. are some things that because we're still on the yellow brick road, there are some things that. Um, we're not on the yellow. We're, we're, we're not doing that anymore. But mm -hmm. there are some things that that individuals have to process before they could be the kind of board members that we need for them to be. Right. Um, and so this also affects, like Ty said, the type of people you're able to get on your board. Right. So people who normally have been, you know, jumping at the bit to get on your board are now like, you know, I realize that life is short and I just want to enjoy it. I want to go travel. I just want to spend more time with my kids. I want to spend more time with my grandkids, whoever. Um, I want to start a business, you know, so I really don't have the disposable time to donate to volunteering on a board because it's not income based. Right. So to volunteer to be on a board, especially if you have a board that's a working board, which is quite demanding. Right. It's like having a part time job and you're not getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. Right. So the trends that are going on right now with people wanting to work from home. So if you're still having board, board meetings in person, you might need to change that to P I can stay in my house in my PJs and talk to you via Zoom. Right. Oh, I don't have to <laughs> go bathe, 
you know, put on some decent looking clothes <laughs> and then drive in traffic to your location. Yes, we could have a board retreat once a quarter or once um, twice a year or whatever like that, where we all get together in a physical space. But you need to have some flexibility in how you operate your business right now, your nonprofit, social enterprise, whatever it is, that you can, um, you know, keep your board members on. You have to be a little flexible. So, I, you know, for myself, I don't live in Connecticut anymore, but I sit on two boards that are in Connecticut. Maybe before I, um, before COVID, they probably would have told me I needed to resign from the board <laughs> because I was moving to another state. But because of COVID, nobody's getting into physical spaces. So everything is being done via Zoom and it has been the best thing possible, even for the board members who are physically in that state because they, again, don't have to drive to a location, mm -hmm. right? They just gotta, wherever they are in their car, <laughs> you know, out to dinner, take a few minutes, pop up and say, hey, here I am, give their two cents and we move forward, right? We had a board retreat last week. I stayed here in Florida because I was not um, flying to Connecticut for a four hour board retreat. Um, and they went there and they just put, pop, prop me up on a um, camera so I could see what's going on and, and talk and they ate and I ate my lunch over here, <laughs> you know? So it, it, it's changing. You have to be able to change. You have to have some flexibilities. At one point in time, I think for about three months, I didn't attend any board meetings and I'm the type of person who attends meetings. I don't like when people stand me up for meetings. So I don't. But I was going through some stuff, just like you talked about, right? Like my brother passed away and on top of my son passing away the year before, the two combined, I just I just checked out. I was like, mm -hmm. something has got to go. And that's what went, right? Mm -hmm. Because I still needed to focus on my business and my personal life. And I was just, I just don't have the capacity, the mental capacity to deal with something else. Mm -hmm. So they didn't penalize me for it they understood. That's the type of flexibility. You have to understand people are having a lot of mental health issues. People are losing people at alarming rates at this point. In time. There's just a lot going on. And then people are losing their jobs. And right now we're talking, we could talk about, um, what do they call it? Um, housing insecurity, mm -hmm. right? So um, a lot of people are losing their, their homes. They're losing their apartments. They're having to move back with family. So there's just a lot going on. They may not be the people that it's happening to, but they may be a recipient of what's right. happening. You know right. what I mean? So just being flexible and re-looking re at your bylaws. Mm-hmm. Or you body, 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 so body. Yeah. <laughs> right, you know, right now everything is about convenience. You know mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. what's convenience, and and, and it, coming out of COVID, even when everything had to go to Zoom, even being able to have a board meeting via Zoom where I can turn my camera off, right? right. I don't have to be, but I don't have to put out that extra energy with the camera on because this it's just mentally, and it's, it's a different it's a different feeling. Mm -hmm. It's such a different feeling, and I think we've talked about that. Being able to jump on Zoom and just talk to you, but not have my camera on is, listen, it takes the stress out of me coming to the meeting. If I always have to have my camera on, it's like I always have to be on 100. And sometimes I want to attend the meeting, but I don't want to be on 100. Sometimes I won't be on 23. <laughs> but I want to hear, hear what you got to say. Exactly. It's not that I don't want to hear you. I just don't want to physically lock eyes with you at this point in time, you know? Four so. hour meeting Monday. Mm -hmm. And I was I was happy because I wasn't required to have my camera on, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, because if I would have had this camera, I'd probably just die right here on the <laughs> right yeah. here in the Zoom live because I ain't no way. I just can't do it. Not mm -hmm. for four hours, I couldn't do it. But it was right. required. I had to be there for four hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think you know, with the, with your board, just being understanding of what each individual is going through because mm -hmm. sometimes when we're we're leading organizations and we feel like well everybody well if I can come to the meeting then they can not necessarily no. everybody's no. different everybody has their own stuff mm -hmm. um, that they have to deal with and prioritizing your stuff your board is is not really a thing You're right not really at the top of my list no matter mm -hmm. what, how much I committed to it or said I would do this when my stuff kick in you know my personal stuff. Then your stuff goes to the bottom. That's exactly. The priorities, right? Life priorities. Mm -hmm. so, so those are some of the things that you need to think about 
when it comes to what's happening, what's trending in our society right now when it comes to your board members. And remember too, it will also affect their abilities to um, fundraise as well. So to keep that in mind as well, because they can't squeeze blood from stone. Mm -hmm. So if people don't have the money to give, then they just can't get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, right? Asking for money if they're not mm -hmm. in a, a, a good financial space themselves, it's right? Like, it's a mental thing, you know. But it's, if I'm not in a good financial space, then I don't feel right asking somebody else to contribute to my organization or donate to, uh, or do whatever because I'm not mm -hmm. doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So you got to take all of those things into consideration. Really have a heart-to-heart -heart board meeting. Find out how you can support your board members and um, what they need because you don't want any of your business to be transactional. You actually want it to be emotional. Um, mm -hmm. That's how you keep your board members happy and that's how you don't have a mutinous situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Until next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>